So I want to do is just take a moment right now and make our intentions as we <clears throat> celebrate this third, this Sunday. fourth Sunday of Lent, also known as Leitare Sunday. <clears throat> um, I do not have the rose color vestments, but my mom put the rose color curtains on behind me just to make sure that everyone knew it was like, no, that's the color of the curtains that we always have. I'm just kidding with you. That's just my mom. And this is not, um, this is not a private chapel in the Vatican. This is my mother's living room. Just letting you know. My mother has more statues in this living room than most churches of, you know, post-Vatican II. But it's a holy place, and uh, I've got a very small community of people here, so relax. I'm not breaking any rules. It's definitely under 10 people, and we're all keeping social distance, all right? So let's just take a moment, and let's humbly... Ask the Lord to bless us and to guide us as let us now stand. And let's join in singing our opening hymn, just a verse of Be Not Afraid. Be not afraid, I go before you always, come follow me. name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Brothers, spirit. brothers and sisters, on this day to rejoice, even though there is much consternation, and pain, and suffering, let us call to mind the theological virtues of faith, hope, and love, and rejoice knowing that the Lord gives mercy to those who seek him. So let us humbly ask the Lord's mercy and his forgiveness. I confess to, I confess Almighty, God to Almighty God and to you, and to you my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, and sisters that I have greatly sinned, 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 sinned in my in thoughts, thoughts, in my in words, words, in what, in I, have what done, I have done, and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This is a reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I'm sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as a man sees, does God see. Because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest son who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him, and he will not begin, and we will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is the one. <clears throat> then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord is my shepherd. 
There is nothing I shall want. The Lord, the Lord is, is my shepherd. shepherd. There, there is, is nothing, nothing I, I shall, shall want. want. The Lord is my shepherd I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my, my shepherd. shepherd. There, there is, is nothing, nothing I shall, shall want. want. He guides me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord, the Lord is, is my shepherd. shepherd. There, there is, is nothing, nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The, the Lord, Lord is my shepherd. shepherd. There, there is, is nothing I shall, I shall want. want. Only goodness and kindness <clears throat> follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord, the Lord is, is my, my shepherd. shepherd. There is nothing, nothing I shall want. want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. Everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will give light. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. He spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such things? And there was division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and you are trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking to you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord. And he worshipped him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In this time of social distancing, 
we actually have a great opportunity to be spiritually closer to the Lord. So think about that. The more distant you are, the closer you actually can get close to the Lord, knowing that when people are far from him, he is actually closer to you. We need to have the spiritual eyes to see it. And as I said last week, in my homily, this year 2020 is really supposed to give us a 2020 vision of what? Of what's happening in our hearts. Because the fact is that God is looking at right now. God is looking into our hearts. And what does God see? I'm sure because it's literally exposed everywhere. Fear, confusion, division, judgment, and all of these things that make life painful to live in. But if we look closer in our eyes into if we look closer into our heart with God's eyes, maybe you're gonna see something. Maybe you're gonna see that people are actually longing for church again. They're longing for community. Because in church, we can actually give each other the sign of peace. We can actually hear voices live and not just virtually. And more importantly, we can receive Christ, his body, blood, soul, and divinity. And I think for many of us who are hungry, we'd be happy if he spat on us. Just like in the gospel. Which I know sounds very weird. But let me tell you about our Jewish brothers and sisters, because in the evening prayer, right before they're kind of turning into nighttime, they actually say this prayer that says, thank God that we are a nation that is just. And I'm kind of paraphrasing it, because they talk about how God is close to us. And then they say, thank God we are not like other nations, which are empty. Nations that are literally empty. And so their word in empty actually has the same consonant as the word spit. I know that that sounds interesting, but that's why in the synagogues they might even have some spit too. Because at that time when they look to darkness, which is a blindness, which is an emptiness, we the people of God are actually supposed to spit. That's why, actually, in the Christian ancient liturgies, they would say, look to the east where the light shines and spit to the west where the darkness leads to the devil. So sorry, California. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We're not spitting on you, California, but we're spitting at the darkness because it is at that darkness that literally is leading us to all of the fears that we have in our hearts. And so, granted, Jesus spat on the dirt and he made mud. Now, please know that when there is dirt involved in the scriptures, it literally evokes you to return to where we came from, to dirt. And so, this idea of Jesus spitting at the emptiness, which is the dirt, and giving light to this blind man is really trying to remind us of what God did with dirt the first time. What did he do? He literally breathed into the dirt and he made man and he made woman in his image and likeness. Obviously, Adam and Eve. Now, granted, we can't even receive the Eucharist. So we can't even receive the spit of Jesus Christ, much less his sacred body, blood, soul, and divinity. But maybe this is a time when we're supposed to develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because that Holy Spirit is what gave life to the dirt in the first place. I know a lot of people who are in the charismatic renewal. These are people who have a deep relationship with the Holy Spirit. They can pray anywhere. Obviously, completely and perfectly in front of the Blessed Sacrament and when they receive the Lord in the Eucharist. But you know what? These people, they can pray anywhere. They can literally just sit in front of the church and they can pray as if they are one with God there. This is a time, if we look into our hearts, where we have to recognize that maybe we need to get in touch with the Holy Spirit again in our life. Because while we might be far from seeing the community and the church and the sacraments and hearing the songs. The Holy Spirit can fill us with so much light that we can see God more clearly and see how maybe this is not a punishment from God, 
but maybe an opportunity for purification. So we don't have to fear. And if we look into our hearts with this 2020 vision, with the Holy Spirit, we're going to see how ever there was anyone who was bored at Mass at one point, they're going to see Mass so differently when the virus is contained and we're going to be able to return to normalcy how beautiful the church is. Because the church is more than a building. The church is the body of Christ. We are members. And where there's two or three gathered in his name, he is with us. And if we had that humble dirt with the spit of Jesus in our eyes, we would see that. Again, we might not even be able to receive the Eucharist. But if we allow the Holy Spirit to touch our eyes, we're going to see what this year with all of the division, with the earthquakes, with the plagues, with the fires. I mean, in Iran right now, they've got swarms of locusts. It might feel like the end times. But, you know, expose what's in your heart to Christ, and he will tell you, maybe this isn't punishment. Maybe this is just purification to strengthen us so that we can see Christ in the darkness. Because there are some dark times. Christ is with us. We're just like the blind man. Emptiness in sight. So let's call out to him through the Holy Spirit to heal us so that we can do what was in the scriptures. As soon as this blind man was able to see, he said, I do, Lord. And he worshipped him. Let us stand, brothers and sisters, and profess our faith. I believe, I believe in, in one God, God, the Father God, Almighty, Almighty, maker, maker of heaven and earth, of, of all things visible and invisible. invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate by the Holy Spirit and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and, and, and the life of the world to come. to come. Amen. Amen. We pray, inspired by the humility of the blind man, to admit that we can sometimes be blind. But that's why the church exists, to help us to see. So let's pray for our church, our Holy Father, all of our Catholic leaders, all of those leaders of Christian denominations and leaders of all religion that we will worship the true God not just with words but with example when we love one another when we heal one another when we serve one another we pray to the Lord, 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 Lord. Lord. we pray for the government and the nations of the world for an end to political bickering and division and for all of those in public servant service to remember that they are servants for the common good respecting the dignity of human life at all stages especially working to protect the most vulnerable the unborn and in this day and age the elderly that they will also truly bring about peace by their example we pray to the lord lord, 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 lord. lord. We pray our families near and far for communities that are struggling at this time. We pray, Lord, that you will make us instruments of your peace and that we will proclaim the name of Jesus 
by our words and our actions of love. We pray to the Lord. No, 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 no. And we take a moment to pray for the sick, the suffering, the poor, the broken, all of those suffering now with the economic crisis and employment. We pray for those dealing with special needs, people who have psychological or emotional damage. There's so much hurt, Lord, but we pray especially for those who feel like they're in darkness. And we take a moment also in silence to speak to the Lord from our own hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray now for all of our beloved dead and all of those who are mourning their loss. We pray for all of those people who are working to prevent death, especially our medical professionals and scientists and our military. We ask you, Lord, to raise up these souls to your kingdom where they can see you in beatific vision. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, on this Sunday to rejoice, to remember that joy comes from faith, hope, and love. Not a feeling, but in faith, hope, and love can we be joyful knowing that you answer these prayers. For we ask all through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'd like for you all to consider donating to your parishes. Give money at this time physically, but you can certainly do that electronically. This is a very difficult time for religious institutions, even though it's supposed to be a time when we really are supposed to be giving from our almsgiving. Let's make sure that we continue to do that and also to support other ministries as well. Information can be found on the links on how you can support my organization, religious organization, and of course, remembering your parish. So at this time, think about and pray about what you are going to put in these sacred vessels as we present them to the Lord and lift them up as gifts from our humanity, the work of human hands, but all gifts of God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, be God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Let us pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice and yours for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We'll lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, He has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out and without end acclaim, Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenis Uncelia Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in Excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise, for 
Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessed, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate, O Lord, the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming for you in thanksgiving, this holy and living sacrifice, look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to your all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you, at the end of this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now with the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And Amen. with your spirit. Share with each other an appropriate sign of Christ's peace. love and peace. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, 
Miserere nobis, Agnus Dei, qui tori spectata mundi, Miserere nobis, Agnus Dei, qui tori spectata mundi, Dona bis pace. Today in a special let's ask the Holy Spirit to touch our eyes so that we can see and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are the called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am worthy, worthy, worthy that you should enter the roof, but, but only say, say the Lord and my soul. The Lord anointed my eyes. I went, I washed, and saw. And I believed in God. This time, I'll go to the small group that I have here and give them communion. I'm going to leave a piece of the consecrated host onto the paten, knowing that that is, is certainly before your eyes. Even if you don't see him, he truly is with you. And then I will also read this prayer for spiritual communion afterwards. Amen. Keep in mind that Jesus Christ has died for us and is risen from the dead. He is our saving Lord. He is joy for all ages. And for all of those who are hungering for the Lord but cannot see him, let us pray this spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, at least spiritually into my heart, I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten every comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So before the final blessing, just a few announcements. Coffee and donuts will be available in the school gym. I'm kidding what I'm talking about. You can have your coffee and your donut if necessary. I want to thank you all for joining us in this sacred celebration. Please, again, be sure to support your local parish. You can donate electronically. Also, to make sure that we're continually praying for people who are suffering, keep that social distance, but know that that doesn't stop you from becoming spiritually closer to each other. Give people a call. Pray for them. Let them know you're praying for them. 
If you want to learn more about everything that we're doing, information is at platinggrace.com. And if you want to support us to give you premium subscribe subscriber information, just again, the information is there, platinggrace.com slash support Patreon dot at Plating Grace. And um, remember, Steve Zano, my, my co-traveler, is going to be um, doing the meditations of the, of the divine every 3 o'clock. His link is on my Facebook page. I'm going to be traveling with him to Italy because we are going to get rid of this thing. Mm -hmm. And we're going to enjoy ourselves in Italy later in the year, like in November. So there are some spaces available. Um, and also, I'm going to be on with Gus Lloyd. Um, pretty, I think it's at least weekly right now on Sirius XM One Twenty. Gus and I have had uh, lots of traveling together, and unfortunately, mm -hmm. our trip has been canceled, postponed. Fear not, we're going to definitely get to Oberammergau. And in the meantime, stay in touch, tell friends and family, spread word, just don't spread germs, and trust God is healing us. We just have to let him. The Lord be with you. And with your and may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Our masses and go in peace. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us from the day of Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him. We humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who are about the world, seeking the ruin of the soul. Amen. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me. And I